been working with the robotic leg that I put together a couple weeks ago, a couple months ago for Peter Rush, the biped, and um, there is a few inherent flaws in the design I was working with. Kind of knew that going into it, but figured I would address them as I got down the line a little further, and here we are down the line. Now circling back to really address those issues, and the issue is revolves around dynamic load distribution. If, um, if, if the robot only has this one degree of freedom to kind of go back and forth, uh, so thinking about your ankle being the ankle joint, if it can only go back and forth, how is it that when you walk you will shift your weight? Move the camera here to get the weight shift, right? How are you gonna how are you gonna shift your weight from left to right to uh, change your center of gravity over top the leg that is standing on the ground as you lift your other leg? So to address that issue, I've come up with this new design, which is the same bracket that I was using before, and swivels in this direction which you're looking at the front of the leg so this would be its side to side action we have this bolt running through um, this little joint or this little coupling here which actually allows me to rota rotate in this direction as well so you have those two degrees of freedom so again thinking about moving your ankle forward moving your ankle side and then all the degrees of freedom with inside of there so you get that kind of 360 degree motion. So this is the new leg or lower half of the leg that I've put together and I'm going to try and walk through this idea through this concept. Obviously it's not fully built or fully baked out yet but the uh, the goal is to get it, uh, get it a little closer in the next couple of days. So this is just an overview of the concept or, or what I'm going to try and do here. So we've got this new system, this kind of universal joint system that allows me to move in multiple directions or these two directions so side to side here and then back and forth in this direction okay so the idea see we've got this actuator mounted up top come back to that the idea is I've got a first actuator that I'll just kind of set into place and what that's going to do is that's going to ride right along the top of this joint here and this bottom actuator is going to serve the purpose of pushing uh, forward and backward, right? Um, it's mounted on, again, mounted on this little bushing, this little uh, um, connector right here. And that's going to actuate and twist this joint right here. Um, so in addition to that, so what are we going to do about the flopping side to side here? So my thought is this. Is... This is a little, I don't, I'm not entirely sure how this is going to pan out, and I don't have all the parts that I need right now, but we can take care of that. I do have one of the parts, um, and that is a spring. So I'm going to use this system of springs. This is a pretty strong spring. I'm pushing on this guy pretty tough. Um, my guess is I actually have to get some even beefier springs. So the idea is this, that um, this upper actuator which you can see is just connected across a bolt right here um, so it has the ability to swivel which will change that because we don't actually want this this actuator to swivel we want this to ride um, with the leg at all times the idea is we'll take the spring here and we're going to mount two springs one spring on this side and one spring on this side and what's going to happen is we really only want the ability uh, for the leg to maintain its central position and then all the degrees of freedom in a single direction. So that is, we, we're, we're never really concerned about bowing the leg to the inside. We're more concerned about shifting our weight outside to the outside of our body. Okay? So if we have two springs, one spring on each side, what we'll do is one spring, if this were the inside of the leg, um, this would be a stronger spring than what we have on the outside of the leg. So this spring would always override the outside spring. And what I mean by that is, this spring will simply be attached, I'm just going to set this in here, this spring will be attached to the base of the ankle here, or where the foot is going to reside, 
and then it's going to mount to the side of the leg and it's going to keep the inside of the leg and the ankle portion um, upright at all times. Okay, so we're going to have constant pressure from the inside. Now, on the outside, let's grab my spring here. On the outside, pretend I have my spring mounted here to the foot, right? We're going to have some moderately elastic um, but very durable kind of cable system running up the side and then connecting through the eyelid of the actuator. So the thought is when I contract um, we will increase the springs resistance or we'll, we'll pull against the springs resistance actually creating a motion of where we're tilting to the side and when I relax it we don't have any actuator to counterbalance that so we're going to rely on the spring, the, uh, again the, the stronger spring on the inside of the leg to counterbalance that as I ease in or I uh, um, take in the actuator so this side where the spring is it'll just kind of bring itself back to a central point so that's the theory on how we're going to get side to side and then it's pretty obvious on um, what the lower actuator is going to do give us this uh, the back and forth motion so hopefully that system, that setup will give us um, those two degrees of freedom, that kind of infinite, eh, infinite limited, right, degrees of freedom to go side to side and front and back. We'll find out.